Spider-Man Far From Home, aka The Night Monkey Strikes Back, was directed by John Watts and stars Tom Holland, Zendaya, Jake Gyllenhaal, and Samuel L. Jackson. The world has changed quite a bit since the events of Avengers Endgame, and even though everyone who got snapshot was then unsnapshot, they still lost the last five years. And for the students at Peter Parker's school, even though they were halfway through the school year, they still have to start that year over, which they think is bullshit, and I agree. And with his mentor's death, Parker is in a bit of a bind as he has some big shoes to fill, but he just wants to live a normal teenage life. Unfortunately, Nick Fury has other plans, and while Peter is on a school trip to Europe, Fury enlists the help of the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, along with a visitor from an alternate Earth named Quentin Beck, aka Mysterio. He's here to help our web-slinging hero stop some powerful elementals from destroying the Earth, but it's possible Mysterio may not be exactly what he seems. And no, that's not a spoiler. Shut up. This was a lot of fun, which is unsurprising for an MCU movie. The day we get an MCU movie that's not fun is the day the Earth just implodes on itself. The stakes are definitely lower compared to Endgame, which is perfectly fine and expected. Instead of the entire universe being at stake, it's just Western Europe. There is a lot of good stuff happening here. Gyllenhaal as Mysterio really liked him, especially towards the end of the movie. He really comes alive. Zendaya as MJ is totally weird in all the best ways, and she and Peter do make a cute couple. And they aren't the only two getting together, as Peter's friend Ned even has a thing going with Betty Brandt, played by Anguri Rice. I've been a fan of her since Nice Guys, which not nearly enough people saw. If you haven't seen it, get on that. And she's still great, and I still cannot believe she's Australian. And there's even a little something going on with Happy Hogan and Aunt May, which of course irks Peter to no end, and I love that. The action sequences are great, especially when Mysterio finally does his heel turn, and again, that is not a spoiler, it's Mysterio, of course he's the villain, shut up. The dream sequences that Peter goes through when he's fighting Mysterio are almost on the same level as Doctor Strange, it's just amazing to watch, and come to think of it, Doctor Strange versus Mysterio is a fight I would pay to see. But there's still something lacking in this movie, and unfortunately, it's Spider-Man. And that is not a knock on Tom Holland. He's a great actor, still can't believe he's British. But of all the characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, he should be the most quip-happy. And he's, like, the exact opposite of that. Especially since he's supposed to be the protege of Tony Stark, who was the MCU's resident quipmeister since literally day one. He should be more quip-happy. This is one thing that Sam Raimi and Tobey Maguire got right. Spider-Man should be a snarky bastard. Andrew Garfield kinda did it a little bit, but not nearly enough, and Holland hasn't really done it at all. I need my snarky Spider-Man, dammit. Now, there are a few more things I'd like to say, but to do so, I have to get into actual spoilers. So if you don't want any spoilers, click the mute button until this goes away. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, J.K. Simmons is back, baby! Oh, I am so happy. He's finally back. And apparently, J. Jonah Jameson is now the MCU's version of Alex Jones, which fits remarkably well, actually. Oh, I was so happy when he showed up at the end of the movie. And let's talk about that ending, because... There's a lot to unpack there. There are some serious implications about what's come before and what's yet to come. Apparently, Nick Fury has actually been Talos since... Well, we don't know how long, really. Since Iron Man 1, perhaps? Has it gone on that long? I don't know, but it'll be interesting to find out. And now everyone knows Peter Parker is Spider-Man, and they all think he's a murderer. Certainly didn't see that coming, and that's gonna shake things up a hell of a lot. I don't know where they're going with this, but I am happy to be along for the ride. So while this version of Spider-Man may be lacking in the snark department, Far From Home was still a lot of fun, has some amazing visuals, and I highly recommend it. And I can't believe I have to say this, but stay until the end of the credits. Still, to this day, people get up during the credits of a Marvel movie. Why? Why? After 10 years, you'd think they would have learned. Well, that's all I got to say about Spider-Man Far From Home. Till next time, take care.